Hello and welcome to lecture 3 of Phys 1104. In this video lecture we're going to be looking at the methods for working with data to get a best estimate and an uncertainty in a measured quantity. And the goal here is to be able to compare that with other numbers to see if it agrees within experimental uncertainty, or as a statistician would put it, to see whether the difference is statistically significant. The point of understanding the precision of our measurements is that we need to be able to compare numbers. So in science, we test theory by experiment to see whether they agree. For example, the rate of precession of Mercury's orbit is predicted to be 575.31 arc seconds per century. Our observations say that it's 574.1, which is not the same as 575.31. However, we wouldn't expect it to be exactly the same because measurements are not perfect, and we expect to get a different answer every time we carry out the observations. We have to look at the uncertainty, which tells us that if we repeat our observations, we can expect to get answers which will differ by 0.65 or even twice that much from the observations that we've seen. The question here is, if the prediction is true, then is this observation a likely outcome of our observation process? A similar idea in engineering is tolerance. That word has many meanings in engineering, but one is that it's the acceptable difference between the actual value and nominal value. For example, this resistor's color code tells us that its resistance has a nominal value of 100 kilo ohms. But no production process is perfect, just like no measurement process is perfect. And so if we measure the resistance, we won't expect to come up with exactly 100 kilo ohms. This silver stripe tells us that it was produced with a tolerance of plus or minus 5%. And so we would expect that the actual value of the resistance lies in the range 100 plus or minus 5 kilo ohms. Let's now look in detail at the process of taking a series of measurements and comparing them with a theoretical prediction. So, of course, there's no theory that predicts the heights of doors, but suppose there was. Let's say it was called the Grand Unified Theory of Doors, and it predicts that this door in my house has a height of 2.2359 meters. And I wish to test that. So I'm going to measure the height of my door frame using a measuring tape, which can be read to the nearest millimeter. And I would say I can make this measurement to no better than that precision. So I measure once and get 2.234 meters. Does that agree with the prediction? Of course it's not the same, but is this amount of variation from the predicted value expected? So the naive answer is that the measurement has an uncertainty of half a millimeter. However, as I've described before, talking about the calipers, at best, that's a best-case scenario. The one measurement simply doesn't tell us what the uncertainty is. What we need to do is make many measurements and examine the statistics of our many measurements to get an idea for the reliability of our measurement process. So let's continue with this example of measuring the height of a door frame. So on the right side of the screen here are 12 actual measurements that I made with a measuring tape of the height of the door in the physics lab. And you can see I didn't get the same answer quite every time. I got a 2.237 meter measurement and a few of 2.236 and so on. Why? Well, no measurement is exactly precise, and there are reasons that you'll get some scatter. For example, I was using a measuring tape. There might have been different amounts of flex in the measuring tape, and measuring the inside of an opening with a measuring tape is a little awkward, so that may have contributed to some imprecision. But even if you use a really well-designed instrument, very well suited to the measurement you're making, there will still be scatter. For example, the door frame itself might not be quite rectangular, and so the measurement on one side of the door frame might be a little different from the measurement on the other. So the question now is what should we quote as the height of the door, what we would call our best estimate or the most representative measurement of the height of the door? 
And what we normally choose is the mean, which you've probably met in earlier schooling. It's one type of average, right? The median is another average, but the one we want here is the mean. And you've probably learned to calculate it. We always take the mean of a data set as the best estimate of the true value, whatever that means, right? There may not actually be a true value of the height of the door because, for example, one side may be a different height from the other. But we still want to have one number that we think is the most representative value of the measurements of height of the door. So let's get our best estimate for this set of measurements. Here are those door frame measurements that I've entered into this spreadsheet, and a spreadsheet is your friend. You could do this in a calculator, of course, but that's slow and painful, and why would you? So I will just take the sum of these oops, and divide by the number of measurements, which is 12, and there is the mean. And I'll just point out I could have more easily used an internal function of the spreadsheet average and not have to bother dividing. But either way, there is the mean with many, many digits, right? And there will again be an issue of how many of those digits are actually significant figures. Let's check that you're understanding this so far. So suppose that a scientist has measured the concentration of a contaminant, and they've obtained the results shown here in this list, 150, 150, 175, 250, and 275 ppm. And we want to know what the best estimate for the true value of the concentration is. So if you're in the course, then Moodle will ask you this question, but even if you aren't in the course, I suggest you should come up with an answer before going on to the next part.